Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Seaman Apps, and today we're going to look at a really cool new feature in iOS 12 and Xcode 10, and that is Siri Shortcuts. With Siri Shortcuts, you can add a shortcut to execute a function in your app from either the search menu in iOS, or as a widget in the notifications, or you can actually create a custom Siri action where you'd be like, hey Siri, order me a pizza, and then it can order pizza from your favorite app to your favorite restaurant. So in this tutorial, we're going to create an app and create a shortcut to order a pizza, the first steps that you would do to order one. So let's get into it. Okay, so I've created a new single view application Xcode project here, and we've landed into the app. The first thing we need to take note of is under targets in Siri shortcuts, we need to remember the bundle identifier because with each shortcut, we need to give it a unique ID and this here will be the prefix of the shortcut. So I'm going to go ahead, copy that, go to the view controller and just add it as a comment up the top just quickly and we're gonna get back to it soon. So let's go back to Siri shortcuts. Under the target Siri shortcuts, go to capabilities and you need to scroll down to Siri and enable that. So just toggle that to on, and we've got that set up. Now let's go over to our main dot storyboard, and we're going to add a label and a button. And if you haven't used Xcode 10 yet, you're probably used to the objects being down in the bottom right hand corner. Well, now they've moved. They're up the top here under this little circle with a square in it. And if you click on that, it will it's an actual pop up window that will pop up on you. So we're going to add a button and we're going to make it order pepperoni pizza. And finally, we'll also add a label to our view controller and make that take up pretty much the whole width of our view controller. Okay, with these added, go to the assistant editor and we're going to connect up the order pepperoni pizza, holding in control and drag still, add an action and we're going to call that action order pizza and then connect up the label and we're going to name that label order. Okay, now we've got the UI connected up, close that down, head on over to our view controller and we're going to add this shortcut now. So in order pizza, we're just going to print order pizza to the console. And we're going to do let activity equals ns user activity. And in brackets, you remember we had the bundle name from earlier. So in activity type, we need to copy that bundle identifier and that's going to be the prefix of the string. So as it's going to be cmu.siri shortcuts and finally we'll do dot order pizza. So this is a unique identifier for this shortcut. So if you had multiple in your app, you might do order pizza two, order pizza three and so on. Or it could be for complete different options in your app. Next of all, we'll give the activity a title. So I'm going to do activity dot title equals order a pizza. Then we'll do activity dot is eligible for search and we'll do true. So this means will your activity show up in the iOS search? So if you start searching for order a pizza, which is this title here, it will show up in the search results. If you tap on it, it will execute that shortcut for your app. And also we can do activity dot is eligible for prediction. That way you don't need to type in a full string in the search bar for a match. So that's the order a pizza. Then finally we're gonna do self dot user activity equals activity. Then we'll do self dot user activity dot become current. And then we're finished off creating our activity and adding it. 
So what happens is when the user clicks on the order pizza button or taps on it, it's going to print out order pizza to the console, create a new activity with this unique ID, set the title to order a pizza and enable it to show up in your search results and add it for prediction as well. Then we set the self, which is the current view controller activity as that one we just created. And finally, we make it become current, which tells us, hey, this activity is actually being used within the app. Finally, if we head over to our app delegate, we're going to add a new function. We're going to start in typing, continue user app. Okay, now we're going to create a new function. If you start typing in user activity, Okay, now in our app delegate, we're going to type in user activity and within the autocomplete, we want to look for an option. If you scroll down, it will be this continue updating here. And it tells a delegate to continue if an activity is available. And what this means, if the user taps on the order a pizza shortcut or command Siri to order a pizza, if they've got it saved, this function here is going to get executed. So what we'll do for now, we'll just simply print out the activity to the console. So the user activity dot activity type. And then at the end, we need to add return false. Okay, so in this print user activity dot activity type, what that's going to do this is going to print out this unique activity type identifier. So that way in the delegate, we can tell what shortcut we're actually resuming. So in this, we're going to do if user activity dot activity type, and we'll check if it equals that activity string we created earlier. And if it is, we'll do if let VC for view controller equals window dot root view controller as question mark view controller and do if let label order equals view controller dot label order then we'll set the label order dot text to ordering and we'll just say we order a pepperoni pizza every time new pizza in the label. So what we do now is when the user uses that shortcut, we check if it's an order pizza shortcut, then whatever the root view controller of the app is, we grab it, cast it as the view controller, which is this view controller class here. And if we find a label on the view controller called label order, we set the text to ordering a pepperoni pizza. So now we can actually run and test it out. So before we run it, from the drop down, just next to where you select the iPhone device, go Manage Schemes. We're going to go Edit. We're going to duplicate the default scheme, and we're going to name this Siri Test. Then go back to Manage Schemes, edit the Siri Test one, and under run, the executable change that from series shortcuts dot app to ask on launch. So you can actually change what's executable changes on launch. And we're going to use this to launch Siri, which doesn't actually happen properly, but that's the way Xcode should work. So it's just good to know for future reference. So let's run our app now and check out our shortcut. So we can see we've got our app here. We've got order pepperoni pizza and the label as just label. So if we tap order pepperoni pizza, we can see down the bottom it's console logging. So we've got 
five so far. If we keep on tapping it, we get more console outputs. So every time we tap that in our view controller, it's executing this activity. So the more the user does something on the app, the more likely iOS will suggest that activity to them. So now we've done that quite a few times. Let's go hardware and home. Then you need to head over to the settings app and under Siri, select that. And you can see we have some shortcuts here. Now yours might not actually show up. And the reason for that is Siri will suggest the most frequently used one. So you may have to go to more shortcuts and guess what? They might not be in there. So for testing, if you don't see it, go back to this menu, go to the developer in the settings and under developer, scroll to the bottom and you'll see a shortcuts testing option here. So make sure you enable that when you're developing shortcuts because each suggestions won't always show up properly. So once you've got that setting done, head over to Siri and you can see we have our shortcuts here. So I've got one that I tested earlier, which is order a pepperoni pizza. So that's from a previous app. So the one we're developing is actually order a pizza here. So you can tap on the add button and actually record Siri speaking a phrase. And when you say that phrase, Siri will execute that shortcut to order a pizza, or you can do whatever you want to in your app. So we'll go back and test that soon. But what I want to show you is something else that you can do with it also. If we scroll to the left, we can search for order. So we'll search for order. And you can see here, the shortcut will actually come up in series shortcuts. So if I tap the shortcut we just created, which is order a pizza, it actually launches our app and sets a label to ordering a pepperoni pizza. And you can see here in the console, it's printed out our activity ID, which is the activity type. So if I go back to the app delegate, what it's done, it's launched the app and it's jumped into this block of code here. It prints out the activity type. Then in our root view controller, it sets the label to ordering a pepperoni pizza. So that's how you can test it out on a simulator because you can't use Siri in a simulator. So that's good to know, but let's check it out on an actual device. All right, so I've got my iPad here. So I'm gonna go to the Siri shortcuts app. And you can see we have order a pizza and the label. So I'm going to tap order pizza a few times. Then I'm going to head back to the settings. Now you'll also need to go to developer tools on your iPad and enable the shortcuts debugging feature on there as well for it to show up straight away. So I've already done that. So I'm going to scroll down to Siri and search. We can see we have my shortcuts here. I'm going to add order a pizza, record it. Order a pizza. Then we hit the done button. And now if I use Siri, hey Siri, order a pizza. You can see it's loading now and it will jump straight into our app and order a pepperoni pizza. And I just want to finish this on a quick note is that your shortcuts will not always show up in the iOS menu because behind the scenes, iOS de will determine which ones are used the most and at what times in order to show up on the shortcuts menu. And second of all, Apple recommends you only use shortcuts for something that's repetitive and the user does a lot in your app. So that might be ordering an Uber to home, ordering your favorite pizza and so on. So you can download the source code for this tutorial in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video if it helped you out.